Merry Christmas and welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. It's been more than a year since dangerous levels of lead were found in Flint's drinking water after the city's water source was switched to the Flint River back in 2014. Several people now face criminal charges in the water crisis, including two former emergency managers who are accused of placing finances over residents' safety. Hundreds of children suffered lead poisoning and residents still can't drink water from the tap without using filters. Meanwhile, efforts are underway to remove lead contaminated pipes from the water distribution system. Joining me now is the mayor of Flint, Karen Weaver. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good to see you. It's good to be talking about your city. Uh, you and I have talked a lot uh, over the last year or so about what is going on in your city. We have some news though, we have some updates. Uh, in terms of these indictments, these charges okay. that were filed against the two emergency managers uh, who were involved in the decision making there. I've asked the governor how he felt about that. It sort of puts the, the responsibility to this for this closer mm -hmm. to him. Uh, I'm curious from your standpoint as the mayor of Flint, what that what does that say to you? The, the idea that this might have been a criminal act, the decision to switch uh, to that, that Flint River drinking source? Well, we felt that way for a long time. And one of the things that Flint has been waiting for for a long time is we wanted people held accountable for this. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to know who, who knew what and when they knew it at all levels, at all levels of government. And we believe they should be held accountable. So it's been a long time coming. So we were pleased with that. Um, and, and when you were talking about the um, what happened as a result of this uh, lead contaminated water, one of the other things I don't want people to ever forget is the number of people that we lost yes. to legionnaires so, uh, as well. Legionnaires, that's right. right. And those were deaths. Those that's were not deaths. just people that's sick correct. or poisoned. That is correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, these are emergency managers correct. who were charged, uh, mm -hmm. people who were sent in to manage the city uh, out of financial crisis. Uh, a, a lot of people have said to me that that's part of the problem. That, 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 that is a big part of the, the problem. The idea of supplanting uh, the democratically elected officials exactly. was part of what led to this. You, you feel like that? This We've is always a, felt that that was yeah. part of the problem. When you put somebody in that reports only to one person, the governor, it takes away the voice of the people. It takes away democracy because people have been elected to uh, be the safeguard and to protect the public uh, safety and the health of people. Yeah. And that was taken from us. And, and money was put over the health and well-being. Every single decision that was made was financial. And uh, they didn't say, what about the people? You know, you switch a water source and you don't test it. Right. That makes no sense. Right. And you feel like the, the mayor at the time, Dane Walling, mm -hmm. Uh, who's who's seen, I think, in pictures celebrating the switch, uh, drinking from a glass, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't think he would have made that decision, that same decision? You know, I don't know. All I know is we were let down by local, state, and federal. When you have uh, local, state, and federal telling you the water is safe, yeah. uh, all of them did that. Everybody did that yeah. and, and uh, told us that for a long time. And all, it, all you had to do was look at. We didn't need scientists to tell us that brown water wasn't good. That there was something wrong. Right. right. Uh, you know, a child knows that brown water is not what you not drink. Not supposed to come out of the faucet. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And we had to put up with that for a year and a half yeah. before we were even listened to. Well, and that's even another question, right? I mean, beyond the, the decision that mm -hmm. was made to switch the source, uh, you have all of these people saying there's something wrong with the there's water. There's something wrong with it the water. It smells. It looks funny. And they were not My listened hair is to. falling out. I have skin right. rashes. All of those kinds of things. That even uh, pets were dying. Right. <laughs> even pets right. were dying. So it, that should not have taken that long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's talk now about the, what's going on currently mm -hmm. in Flint. Uh, the the replacement of, of the lead pipes got a boost. A couple weeks ago, when yes. the when the Congress finally mm -hmm. passed uh, legislation that will send some money uh, to do it, H how long of a process do you expect that to be? Well, well, it's winter time yeah, now, so right. that kind of slows now. us down. <laughs> right. we, they even should have done it. We earlier. were working. Um, 
this past week. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've had a couple of snowstorms that have slowed us down, but our goal was to try to get a thousand done before the end of the year. Okay. So we, while we didn't reach that, we're really excited about what we've been able to accomplish. And we know when spring kicks in, we're ready to go. Uh -huh. You know, we've prioritized where we need to get started. And so that money helps us continue the process. We don't have to wait. Yeah. And so that's a, a great thing for the city. Uh, and so when you say a thousand, is that a thousand houses? That, uh, Let service lines. That, service we, lines. That, that was our goal for the end of this year. But okay. like I said, we had the snow come. So, yeah. uh, and, and put that in put that in uh, perspective for mm -hmm. us. How many? How many? Well, we we uh, with about five million dollars, we're probably going to be able to do about five thousand. Okay. Okay. So you still. We, we have a long way to go, and that's why uh, we're going to use the 20 million next. Uh -huh. uh, as soon as spring kicks in, we're starting with that 20 million, and then we should have the money in, you know, that the federal government yeah. has given us. And so that's what's so good is we can have more crews out there working, yeah. and um, we can move quicker. And that's right. what the people and deserve. And that's what people want. Right, are, that's what they want, and they deserve it. Are, are people responding to the idea of this, these lead service? I mean, I can't imagine after uh, having this this water running from your faucets for for two years mm -hmm. the idea that you'll get a line that 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 stops that from happening there, I know. there must be I know I mean it's it's like we finally see a light at the end of the tunnel and yeah. we know that we've been heard and we have not been forgotten yeah. and that Flint is a priority and Flint is worth the investment because one of the things we've always talked about uh, with this crisis is this is a voice and a platform for these other cities around the country because we know that we've got this aging infrastructure and people need to pay attention yeah they need to pay attention uh, when we talk about infrastructure in Flint mm -hmm. uh, water is is obviously a, a big priority. Right. There's other infrastructure, though, that we have neglected. That we have neglected. For a long time. Mm -hmm. Do you wonder or do you worry that just replacing the lines, given the damage that was done uh, to the city mm -hmm. uh, because of the water crisis, that, uh, that it will still suppress population, for instance, uh, scare people away. I mean, well, is there more we need to we do? We certainly to... hope not because we know that's the only way that people will have confidence and trust. Mm -hmm. uh, we can talk about recoding pipes all day long. That's what people don't want to hear about. Right. Uh, we need new infrastructure. Need and new so lines. that's why that has always been the goal. If somebody said tomorrow the, everything is fine, we still need new infrastructure because that's what's going to build the trust and the confidence in the people that are there. That's what will attract other people and actually keep businesses and bring new businesses into the city. And that's been one of the good things is we've been able to talk with, you know, and I'm, I don't want to say the names, but talk with businesses because mm -hmm. they needed to see we were taking this seriously and we are fixing this water problem. and. Um, it's, it, we're talking about economic development opportunities as well. So while we've had this crisis, one of the things that I do believe is our responsibility and my responsibility is to make some good things happen as a result of this. And that's what we're looking at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about the people of Flint. Okay. Uh, I, I hear a lot of people talk about broken trust, mm -hmm. uh, skepticism about mm -hmm. the future, about the fixes. What do the people of Flint tell you about those things? I mean, you you hear more directly well, from them. Well, you than just the rest said of us. it. You just said it. There is broken trust, and we know that. Like I said, when you've been um, misled mm -hmm. by uh, government at every level, uh -huh. that's hard to build back. And that's why we said we we've, we've got to do some things differently. We've got to be very honest and open and transparent with the people, and we're holding people accountable. When we sit around the table with the state, when we sit around the table with the federal EPA, we're we're holding people accountable and so we're taking a, a, a very different approach to to how we're going to move forward yeah. um, even when we talked about the the health of people that's why it was so important for the city to hire its own uh, chief public health advisor and we've done that so yeah. we're putting things in place to make sure that we're holding everybody accountable we're addressing all of the issues and concerns people have and you know we've got the eyes of America on us sure. so we've got to do things right and now is our chance to do that uh, do you feel like Flint is losing people because We've of lost the water some crisis? People because yeah. of the water crisis, right? And um, which you know, which exacerbates a problem that has been going on for decades. Anyway, right? exactly, uh, exactly. We already the... had some issues and challenges previous uh, to this water crisis, and so that didn't help things. And so that's why I said we've got to do these other things. And while we know that we have to. Uh, 
get new pipes in there. We have to do that. We also have to address the health and the well-being of the people because we had an infrastructure crisis and a public health crisis. But we also had an economic crisis as a result of this. And that's why economic development is going to go hand in hand with replacing the pipes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, let's talk more about the health uh, okay. of Flint residents. That's a problem that I, I, I know is going to go on for a very long time, mm -hmm. especially with the children who were exposed. Right. We won't know for a long time, uh, you know, what the effects of that will exactly. be, or how widespread that is. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people doing some really good work right. uh, in that space. Do you feel like there has been enough money and attention given to that effort? So no, far? and, and um, we're going to continue to press for more money and to keep the attention and the spotlight on Flint, and that's one of the reasons we have to do this, because uh, some of the kids that have been impacted they will be impacted for the rest of their lives and so it's important that we get the resources and the services and supports that not only those kids deserve but their families deserve because this doesn't just uh, affect the child it affects the whole family right that's a that's when when the kid is hurt and suffering the family is hurt and suffering and um, so it's stressful for them uh, it brings uh, mental health issues to them as well that my kid has been damaged as a result of this that's sure. stressful to a parent that's sure. guilt for a parent and so we've got to look at what these families need as a result we've got to look at what this has done to those families that have lost people to legionnaires yeah. you know people are angry and hurt and sad and anxious and so that's that's why we're going to continue to pr to press on and say we need more money. Yeah. We need uh, more money. In terms of money, uh, one of the other things that that helped fuel the water crisis was, of course, the the financial relationship between the state and the city. Mm -hmm. The tremendous disinvestment uh, that has right. taken place over a really long over period a really of time long period of time is what pushed cities like Flint to mm -hmm. this place where you're sitting over a, a balance sheet trying to save money on right. on clean water, which right. is crazy. Uh, have you talked with the governor much about that problem or heard from him any inclination to try to reverse that? The emergency? The, or the, the investment, the disinvestment. Yeah, in, uh, and, in, and, that's uh, why, and that's one of the things we have talked about uh, is letting him know that this is more than just the infrastructure. This is more than just the public health. And that's why it's so important that we uh, have economic development. Even when we looked at how water was being distributed, we had the National Guard in there and we yeah. thanked them for coming in initially to get this jump started. But instead of money going to them, we could be paying young people. Uh, we have a lot of young people between the ages of 16 and 24 that aren't in school, that are unemployed, mm -hmm. but they want to be part of their city. They want to be a contributing member. They want to, you know, that's part of the healing process. And so what we did was we got them employed. And so they distribute the water. They help package up the food and those that were interested we got them hooked up with Michigan Works so they can go through an apprenticeship program with the plumbers and the pipe fitters and um, you know be part of fixing Flint and when they're done with this not only are they getting paid but they have a skill that we hope they'll that stay in they Flint can stay employed but, um, but stay they can employed. stay employed yeah. wherever they are and we know with new infrastructure coming in that opens up opportunity for a lot of jobs yeah, yeah. a lot of jobs and it's important that people in Flint get those jobs and that's that was one of the exciting things about when we were doing the lead service line replacement. We kind of took our time uh, putting some of those RFPs out there, but we wanted things done in such a way that local people would benefit and um, get some of this money coming in. Yeah. Usually a big company comes <laughs> in and the local residents don't benefit, don't benefit. economically. Yeah. And so three out of those three companies, two of them were from Flint. One was from the Genesee County. So we're trying to keep it local. And and one of the companies, I'm, you know, it's it's exciting to say is an African-American company. Wow. And um, to get that kind of that contract too, had right? not happened yeah. before in the city of Flint. Yeah. Uh, before, before I let you go, mm -hmm. uh, I want to give you a chance to talk about, I know, uh, you are really focused also on promoting the good things that are happening in Flint right. and, and making it clear that, yeah, this water crisis was terrible, mm -hmm. uh, but there are some, some there things There are a lot of good forward. things uh, going on in the city of Flint, and we had lo a lot of good things going on before. And when you look at um, the colleges and universities that we have in the city of Flint, mm -hmm. we have Kettering, one of the best engineering yeah. uh, universities in the country. We have Mott College, which is one of the best 
uh, community colleges. We have U of M Flint, we've got Baker. So we've got some, some great resources in the city of Flint. When you look at those hospitals that we have, we've got some great things going on. Downtown is developing, mm -hmm. that's been going very well. And so we're looking at how do we uh, expand that because we've got to get to the neighborhoods. Yeah. We've got to get to the neighborhoods. But I think as people see what's going on and we've been talking about businesses coming into the city and probably in the spring we'll be able to talk some more about exactly what those businesses are and where they'll be located and the number of people that they want to hire. Yeah. It's going to be very, very exciting. Yeah. All right. Uh, Karen Weaver, Mayor of the City of Flint, thanks as always for Thank being here. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. you. I appreciate and it. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Yes.